We previously proved this result connecting functional limits to sequential limits, link in the description. And thank God for that, because the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function is kind of a pain to work with. So it will make our lives a lot easier to be able to use results about sequences to prove results about function limits. And that's what we're going to do today to prove some basic limit laws for functions. Here are the four laws that we'll be proving. Chapters in the description if you want to skip around. We'll be proving the constant multiple rule, the sum rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule, you might call them. And we will prove them very easily using the analogous laws for sequence limits. Link in the description to where we proved that, which was quite a while ago. So quick recap of this stuff before we jump into the proofs. The limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l if and only if the limit of the sequence of images of the function converges to l for every sequence a n in the domain where a n converges to that limit point c and each a n is not equal to c. So this was the result connecting function limits to sequence limits and these are the laws that we're going to use it to prove. Throughout the proofs we'll be assuming that we have functions f and g each mapping a subset of the reals a to the real numbers and we're assuming that c is a limit point of the domain a. We're also assuming the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l and the limit of g of x as x approaches c equals m. Let's begin with the first result, the limit of any real number k times f of x as x approaches c is just going to equal k times the limit l. To prove this using sequences, we just take an arbitrary sequence a n from the domain a that converges to c and whose terms are not equal to c. Then, since the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l, the limit of f of a n as n approaches infinity must equal l, because a n is approaching c. But thus, by the sequence limit laws, the limit of k times f of a n as n approaches infinity equals KL. And so we've shown that for any sequence in the domain converging to C, the limit of K F of AN is equal to KL. Thus, the limit of the function k f of x as x approaches c must also equal kl. Again, we're applying previously proven sequence limit laws here, which I'm just abbreviating SLL. Since we know the limit of this sequence is equal to l, the limit of that same sequence, but where each term is multiplied by k, by the sequence limit laws must just equal k times the original limit l. And then we're able to use this theorem connecting sequence limits to function limits to make our final conclusion that the limit of kf of x is equal to kl. Using sequences, the rest of these proofs are similarly straightforward. Here is result two, that the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c is just the sum of their limits, l plus m. To prove this using sequences, we let a n be any sequence in the domain a that converges to c and whose terms are not equal to c. Then, by the sequence limit laws, the limit of f of a n plus g of a n is equal to the sum of the limits of those respective things, the limit of f of a n plus the limit of g of a n. But both of these limits must be equal to the original function's limits. So the limit of f of a n must equal l, since a n is approaching c, and that's f's limit at c. And similarly, the limit of g of a n must equal m, because a n is approaching c, and m is g's limit at c. But then we've shown that for any sequence like this, the limit of f of a n plus g of a n is equal to l plus m. Thus, the function's limit must be the same thing. The limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c must equal l plus m. Same idea here for products. We want to prove that the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c is just the limit of f of x, l, times the limit of g of x, which is m. To prove this using sequences, we take an arbitrary sequence in the domain converging to c whose terms are not equal to c. Then, by the sequence limit laws, the limit of f of a n times g of a n as n goes to infinity must be the product of their limits, the limit of f of a n times the limit of g of a n. But the limit of f of a n must equal f's limit at c, since a n is approaching c. 
and that's L. Similarly, the limit of G of AN must equal M. And so we've shown that for any one of these sequences, the limit of F of AN times G of AN is L times M. And so the limit of F of X times G of X as X approaches C must be L times M. The idea with the sequences is really that it doesn't matter how we approach C, the limit is going to be L times M. And so indeed the functional limit will be L times M as well, since it worked for an arbitrary sequence. Finally, the fourth law for division. Division can often be a messier character to deal with, but not here. We want to prove that the limit of F of X over G of X as X approaches C is just equal to the limit of F of X, L, divided by the limit of G of X, which is M, assuming, of course, that M is not equal to zero and that G of X is not equal to zero for every X in the domain A. And let me just mention that saying G of X is non-zero for every X in the domain sounds like a stricter requirement than it really is, because whatever the domain is, we could restrict the domain to a smaller subset such that this is true just to allow this argument to go through smoothly and then you could broaden your view back to the original domain having evaluated the limit. Really we just need A to be some space around the limit point C where this is true. It wouldn't actually have to be the entire domain in every single context. But to prove this using sequences, we let a n be an arbitrary sequence in the domain that converges to C and whose terms are not equal to C. Then, by the sequence limit laws, the limit of f of a n divided by g of a n must be the quotient of the limits, the limit of f of a n divided by the limit of g of a n, because we have a sequence limit law for this. And then the limit of f of a n must equal the limit of f of x, which is assumed to be L at C, of course. Similarly, the limit of G is M, and so we've shown for arbitrary sequence AN that the limit of F of AN over G of AN is equal to L over M. Thus, the limit of F of X over G of X as X approaches C must equal L divided by M. It's vital to have these basic limit laws so that we can split up functional limits into simpler parts. And now, thanks to our sequence results, we have done it with ease. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you find these real analysis videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching.